Hello and welcome, this is Jason Baker with Integrum Retro, and this is how to calibrate your Sindon light guns for my new light gun drive. Shall we play a game? The first thing you do is go ahead into the LaunchBox folder and double click on LaunchBox. That's going to open up LaunchBox. Then you can go to the light gun calibration platform category and you're going to see two options. Now the colors don't matter, but you're essentially going to be configuring your guns independently. So you have one icon for gun one and one icon for gun two. In this case, I'll show you how to calibrate one light gun. Same process for calibrating the second. So double click on the software. It takes about three to five seconds, so just give it some time. It is loading. Notice it'll pop up here in the lower corner. Let's click on that and the software is already running. Now first, click on Select Light Gun. You'll notice here that the, call, uh, the box Selected Light Gun is empty. That's because we are going to assign this software, Gun 1, to be my blue light gun. So I'm going to select the light gun, then I'm going to click on Save. So now every time the software starts, this software is going to start the blue light gun. Now if you need to do a firmware update, or if you're curious if you should, click on Stop Software, get your light gun info, and that's going to tell you what firmware version you have. I was just recently running 1.6, um, so what I did is I clicked on Updated Select Firmware, it updated it, and now I'm running at 1.8. Don't forget, let's press Start again to start the software, because now we're going to do some calibration. Now let's go over to Configuration. Now what I do is the software is automatically going to download any prior calibrations. If you move the gun to a different device or TV, you may want to repeat these steps, so don't worry if there's already things filled in. So what we'll do now is we're going to calibrate this for the monitor it's on right now. This is no longer, this is on my desktop, it's not on my arcade cabinet. So these settings will change. So let's enable show rectangle, show process video, and raw video. This is going to allow us to look at the screen. Alright, so now we're looking at the screen and obviously I've got some background imagery that may interfere. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the border. On the right hand side of the gun, the button closest to the trigger, that will enable the border. Now if you press it multiple times, it's going to cycle between a widescreen and a 4x3. We want the widescreen um, in this case because it fits everything. Okay, so now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for settings that are going to accommodate this big picture here. Right. So the things that I can look at, um, first of all, you know, maybe if I close my window back there or I'll just hold my gun very steady, this looks pretty good. It doesn't seem to be mixing up too much. What I can do though is go ahead and cover this with uh, the lens with your hand. I can try my exposure settings. Let's go ahead and drop this down a little bit. I found that this is the most effective. Let's try the from minus 7 to minus 8. Click set. Let's see. Look at the screen now. Ooh, that looks much better. So it's, um, you can see here it's ignoring my background and it's focusing Actually, it's looking, it's only seeing the square. It's not seeing the whole monitor. Okay, so that's probably too dark. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. Let's go to minus six, because I wanna make sure it's seeing the entire screen. So we'll click set, raise this up. There we go. Okay, so despite a colorful, you know, I've got trees out there. Despite that, it does see everything. So this is the, the settings I want to save. Now, since I wanna save this, I'm gonna cover this up with my hand, because I need my mouse back. We're going to take off the raw videos. We no longer need this. And we're going to save the settings. Now these settings are saved to the software. Now what we want to do is burn this to the light gun. All right, so notice I clicked on the burn to light gun next to the camera. We don't really want to overwrite that, so we'll cancel it. We want to burn the settings to the light gun, which it would be nice if they labeled them differently. This should say burn settings to light gun, and this should be, you know, burn the, the camera we're using. So we'll go and click on that. Okay, so now anytime the software starts, it's going to use these particular um, visual settings to see the border. Now the final thing is to tune where the mouse cursor is. We want some accuracy. So there's nothing you have to do here on the border uh, section. I'll go ahead and delete this. But if you ever can't uh, use the border, um, go ahead and you can click on this update here and you can use a keyboard, the Alt B, to turn and cycle the border if your button's not working. The final step here is to go to alignment. We want to make sure that when we point at the screen, it's actually aligned with our sights. 
Now what you can do is point the gun at the screen, so I'm doing that now, and I'm moving the mouse cursor. There's a D-pad button on the left of the gun. Hold down the D-pad direction to the left, which is basically pointing towards the lens. Hold that down for about three seconds, and there you go. You'll notice that my cursor snapped to the center of the screen. Now the goal is, is to look down your sights and point at the arrow. And so I'm looking at the arrow, and I'm kind of happy with that. If I need to make adjustments, I can make minor adjustments here. Let's just say I want to move this up slightly. I think that looks good. I want, I want this to be just above my crosshairs. All right. Um, no changes to the left or right. So now what I can do is cover up the lens with my hand. And we're going to save the alignment changes. And that's it. So there's some other options. The cursor offset. I've found that this really wasn't too necessary. But if you want to... Um, correct for maybe your screen size you can check this box and then type in the size of your television set and it does some additional math but I found just the normal alignment is fine button assignment I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this it should be these defaults so don't change this so take a look or take a screenshot and then recoil is certainly up to you I don't have recoil on mine and I don't have a pedal as well and that's it so now that you're calibrated now we can play some games so here I'm loading uh, Time Crisis on Sony PlayStation 2. It's one of the few platforms where I don't inject a border automatically. So I thought this would be a great example. So what I'm gonna do is press the button on the far right of my gun next to the trigger and flip on the border and we're gonna start my calibration. There we go. So that looks fantastic. And it goes all the way up, even though I've got a window up there and down. Okay, so I'm gonna press the side button here the side button is the uh, considered uh, the right mouse just to get through the screens and I'm happy with that all right in just a moment we should uh, be able to play so my software the light gun software has already started up the Sindon software which enabled this border and let's see how well the aim is I am impressed with how close I'm actually sitting to the screen. Uh, this is probably a 35 inch widescreen monitor. And I'm just shooting at the screen to skip. Now much like this is a pedal game, I'm going to use the button on the left of the gun uh, closest to the lens to pop up and start firing. Okay. Accuracy feels pretty good. Able to do a headshot here despite him having a shield. I am kind of getting with this guy in the far right. Okay, I was able to do that. This and you know that's at the far corner of my monitor. So yeah, very happy with this calibration. There we go. Continue. Doesn't make me a better shooter, but uh, pretty easy to get set up. That's a one-time only setup. Once you've calibrated, you're done. So go play some games.